Okay, I'm going to give this another try, and hopefully you'll be able to understand me a little bit better. This this time my audio was kind of set up weird on a previous one. So it's a, uh, another MicroStation uh, lesson. I'm going to expand it a little bit more this time, take a little bit more time uh, explaining what I'm going to do. Um, you can see we had started this one previously. I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. It is a 3D model. And we'll go ahead and close out some of these items, these views. Maximize this. You can take a look at this in a top view or, or isometric. Um, and what we want to do is go to our settings, design file, working units. We're going to set this to inches and to two decimal places. So we'll just be working in master units in inches. We'll say OK. I'm going to do a file save settings. We'll take our time a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. We'll just build them again. Let's create a couple levels. Actually, we'll create three. So I go to the level manager up here, and we're going to call this one, uh, we'll call it candy. We'll create, just right click and say new. We're going to call this one glass. And we'll right click and say new, and this one will be called, uh, uh, we'll just call it base. It'll be like a tabletop. I'm going to double click on this one that says base, so that is the active level that we're going to work in. I'll change my color and put my line weight up just so it's easier for you to see what's going on on the screen. And all I'm going to do here is just create a, a slab. So I'm going to hit my T key to rotate my compass to the top view. And we'll make the top of this table uh, 10 inches by 10 inches by 1 inch. Okay. So far, so good. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change to our candy level. And I'll change my color to something else. 27 works. This is just going to be for an outline. I'm going to take my smart line, Q1, and uh, I'm going to hit a tentative point here. I just want to go up in the center of the table so I can just let this hit the enter key and let it snap to that center point. I want to hit F for front and we're going to draw this up a distance of five inches and we'll put a radius on this of 1.5 and I'm going to swing this around a little beyond 90 degrees or 180 degrees I'm sorry. So now we have this piece I'm going to zoom in on the bottom of this stick and we're going to create, uh, I think in the previous version of this I created a, uh, a half inch radius. So this I'll do it a little simpler rather than creating a circle and then doing a boolean operation. I'll just start with a smart line. I'll use this green color. Hit T for top again. We're going to come out 0.25. Hit tilde. Tilde key is that key just above the tab key to bring me into a radius mode. Go back to the origin point, swing this 180 degrees, hit tilde again, toggles back to the original. Now it's going to create a shape. That way it just creates it as one piece. We can mirror this now on a horizontal axis by clicking on make copy, horizontal, just grab this by the point, mirror it to itself, and I'll change the color of this now to Oh, this purple color. Okay. So we're going to create that candy cane now by doing an extrude along a path. Normal alignment. Uh, we'll put a 360 degree spin angle on this just so you can see how it works. I want to left click on the path, left click on the first object hold down the control key, select the second object, and just left click again. Now if we look at this in a um, we'll go smooth with shadows, we can see that we have kind of a candy cane but it's not really twisted enough. Uh, what we found in previous versions of this is that actually 
I'll control Z back to that. Um, and let's uh, do it again. This time we're going to change the rotation to uh, 1440. And we're going to spin it again. Select the path profile. Hold down the control key. Select second profile. Now we have something that looks more like a real um, candy cane that we'd buy in the store. And we're just going to take that and just kind of set it off to the side. And we'll do something with that a little bit later. So the next thing we're going to do is go into our glass level. And I want to create a glass that we can uh, place a series of candy canes in just to try to make a little bit of a still life. So we're going to go back to a wireframe mode. And again, we'll start. This time I'll just pull this one up. I'll we'll say 0.4 inches. And what we'll do is extrude this one. Oops, just had it up. And I'll say 4 inches. And we'll extrude this one up. Four inches. Now let's see if it'll subtract this one from this one. That worked. Might have been the way I was trying to combine those together. So now let's go back to my slab. I'm just going to do this really quickly. say 1.5 that should be big enough rotate it whoops 1.5 there move it into the center position bring it up to a front view We'll move it over and we'll tilt it out. Oops. Sure, you use two point. There we go. Two point rotation. Apologize for my clumsiness. I guess we can never be afraid to make a little mistake. Now we'll go back to our active angle. Pretty sure this is going to work now. Whoops. Again, make sure make copies is on. There we go. It's the problem with making a mistake, you start uh, rushing things a little bit. Now let's try that Boolean operation and we want to take our cup, select our first object. I'll just, ah, that works now. Cup, hold down the control key and then we can select all of the other objects all the way around. And all of that was just to make the cup have a little bit of a uh, fluted effect on the bottom. We'll take our fillet tool and we'll put a 0.15 radius top edge this edge we'll, uh, maybe a 0.1 Right on this bottom edge. Better go back to wireframe so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, fill it. Whoops. The right edge. If we pull this up, we can see we've got our glass setting on the tabletop. All right, so now we're to this part. Let's start playing with some materials, and we'll go ahead and put a uh, uh, rendering. We went to settings, rendering, materials. And we'll go to palette, open. We'll use some standard glass palette here for the... Uh, 
want glass refractive that should work okay and I like to assign material or excuse me attach material so I don't have to worry about levels and colors and when you attach it make sure you click outside the object so it doesn't find one specific point and if we do an isometric now I want to put a tabletop on this so I'm going to open up another palette just from our standards and we'll put a uh, a nice glossy wood table so I'm going to go to my wood palette uh, see what we've got here high gloss chestnut oh that's kind of pretty and I do want the high gloss so you can see that and I want this to be nice and shiny um, and we'll darken it up just a little bit all pattern we're going to hit this, attach that material right to this tabletop. And if we look at it now as a uh, smooth with shadows, we can see. And don't worry that it's not, uh, I'll put some default lighting on for a second. But the glass just kind of looks transparent right now, not, not that cool. Don't worry about it. We'll fix that up in a second. So we'll go back to wireframe. And I want to put uh, four of those candy canes inside the glass. So I'll go back here and we're going to take one candy cane, select the whole thing, and I'm just going to make a copy of it all the way down through. We'll change the color. Some of these, I'll go with a little lemon drop here. And the blue, just being, I can select some strange colors. Oops. Doesn't like that one. There we go. Let's get a little creative here, get something nice and bright. <laughs> Cinnamon. And I probably should put a white color on here. And right there. Whoops. That looks pretty good. So now, what I want to do, I'm going to rotate this up to a front view. I'm going to raise the height of these up so the bottom of the candy cane is in the bottom of the glass. So I'm just going to take my move tool, bring it straight up, hit the enter key, and just place it right there. Oops. Make sure you get the right tool and scale. All right. Now let's try it again. Hit the enter key, and we'll place it right at this height move these over so they're actually lined up in the cup to start with and we'll start with this one and all we want to do is just rotate this one down using two points we'll just lean it over and see how it just you want it just to be touching the lip of the cup so there's the first one We'll take our top view again, we'll select our second candy cane, and we will place, move that over, maybe to here, and we'll rotate that one using two points without making a copy now, we'll just rotate it up like this, and I want to look at it from a right side view now, I want to tilt this one over. So it's leaning just on the edge of that cup. Okay. Let's rotate it to a top view again. And we'll rotate this one in the opposite direction. Like this. 
We'll place it. Oh, we'll lean it back just a little more. Bring it up to a front view. This one will lean. over so it's leaning on that lip now we have one more to do and I'll rotate that one actually I'll select it first there we go and we'll move it I'm going to rotate it. Oops, don't I want to rotate it from the center point. In this direction, again, we'll look at it from a right side view, and I want to flip this one. So that's leaning on the glass. Now, they still don't look quite normal so I'm going to rotate it back up to a top we wouldn't actually lay them in like this so I want to spin these a little bit so I can grab this one by a center point and just rotate it to an angle um, I can select just this one in other words going left to right I can select it so and I will just give these kind of some odd angles so that they don't look like they're too perfect and we'll do the same thing with this one, just kind of pull it out. And lastly, we'll kind of give this one a nice natural look by just leaning it. Yeah, we'll go in this direction. So it looks like we're kind of separated. If we pull it up now and look at it in the isometric view, we can see that uh, if we put it into a smooth with shadows, we have our candy canes and they're kind of leaning. And I got one there. How'd that one get intersected? All right, we'll fix that. I have to look at it from different angles. It's this one. Okay, that's two candy canes. Then. All right. Oops. Sorry. And now we'll just pull it out here. How's that? some reason it didn't want to lean down so I'll lean it down all right let's let's just go with that for maybe just move it just these little adjustments that keep people from saying well why did you do it that way We could tinker with it some more, but uh, I think for now we'll just leave it the way it is. Now, so we can look at that as a uh, I ended up with four can uh, five candy canes, so obviously this one is a duplicate. That's why I messed up. There we go. Take that one right out of there. Let's look at it as a uh, smooth with shadows again. Okay, looking pretty good. Now, what we want to do is uh, is kind of uh, give it a little bit of perspective. We're just going to use a simple change view perspective, and we'll just hold down the left mouse button, and we'll just pull on it like this. Um, and I'm going to take off my default lighting, and what I want to do is put a spotlight on this, and I'm just going to do a couple uh, quick little spotlights. 
a flash bulb, then we'll do a place spotlight. Whoops. And I'll select a oh a 40 watt bulb. And I'm not really worrying about where these are just yet because I'm going to end up refocusing them anyway as long as I can see them on the screen. So let's rotate this to a front view. Uh, bring it back to a this out of the way. Well, I got those things way out of whack, didn't I? Yeah, that's all right. Always easy to beg forgiveness after the fact. So I'll move this one down. Maybe we'll have all our light coming from one direction or one area. And uh, we'll spin this one around. It's pointing down at the table. Take this one. Rotate that one so it's kind of pointing in that direction. Pull it up to a front view. Actually, the right side would probably work better. Just tilt it down. Front view again. This time we'll select this one. You can actually see that that's having a little bit of effect already on what we're seeing. Whoops, don't want to see that. Alright, so now we can give it its perspective. I didn't really want to see those lights, so I'm just going to turn off the constructions. The lights are still there, I just can't see that the, the icons that make the lights visible. And we'll look at this in this direction. I'm going to pull my sides in for what we want as our... Whoops, wrong side. I'm going to resize this window so I just see what... So I'm hoping with my lights on and the glass in place that when I render this now as a luxology uh, I'll see the reflections in the glass, we'll see the reflection of the glass and the candy in the tabletop. So if we go to utilities, render, luxology, we'll make a couple initial settings here in that we'll set our uh, hit there. Render, Luxology. This is another project that I worked on. Rendering preferences, that's fine. Our lighting's all set. Matter of fact, let's turn off our solar light and our ambient light, just for the heck of it. We'll check our preferences. I want interior good. Environmental settings will go with oh material preview for the background. We're just going to use a color and we'll go with something in kind of an earth tone. Maybe just tan, just to see what it looks like. All right, close that out. And now all we have to do is make sure we're in one. This has got a fairly large rendering. Let's cut it down to say 1600. And we'll hit the begin Luxology rendering. Now this will take a few minutes. It'll make actually four passes over the image. You can see the first pass, it just does a rough pixelated version of the, uh, of the image. 
not to worry it should get better remember we only have two spotlights that are highlighting it so it'll have some effect on, on how it looks when it's done the uh, kids in our CAD class or CAD camp classroom kind of enjoy doing this stuff because it gives them a little bit of freedom to do do what they like to and kind of be creative with the size and the shapes of the things they're putting in especially the colors and the materials uh, so things like this that are kind of quick and easy and they can see something that they recognize in real life uh, is somewhat a lot more effective as far as I'm concerned uh, than just kind of the widgets and things that we put into our, our other things uh, no I don't so keep moving it's on pass four now then it blends all those passes down you can see the uh, uh, the background going into play now uh, for the for the final product it's still gonna be a little pixelated until the final version uh, as it starts to get into that glass you'll see more of the reflection and the refraction of the uh, of the glass in the uh, in the image itself which is where those fluted bottoms kind of helps out because it kind of gives it more of a realistic um, reflection and probably takes it a little bit longer to render but but it still looks kind of neat I maybe should have used some brighter colors with my uh, with my candy canes but I'm kind of a dull person anyway so we'll see how it goes <sighs> Need to shut up my computer, I guess. The Jeopardy theme song. Do 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 do. Do 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 I was hoping to see a little bit more reflection of the glass in the bottom. I'm seeing some, but not a whole lot. So I'd probably go in and change the reflectivity of that material maybe a little bit more if I wanted to see more. You can see a little bit of the candy canes hanging over the lip. But again, once this is completed, it'll smooth itself out. We may see a little bit more. Also, kind of darkening and changing the, the resolution, you're able to do that after the fact. So what we have here isn't uh, really the total... Uh, final product. You notice how it goes slower when it gets into some of those areas where the glass and the uh, it's looking at light and also the reflectivity of the uh, of the objects within the glass so it takes it a long, longer time to uh, calculate those areas seeing that uh, fluted uh, the bottom of the glass where it gives you that kind of double image because of the uh, uh, refraction and the, and the way the, the uh, image is um, split across that glass which makes it look kind of cool and realistic you also see how it distorts the back edge of that uh, table platform because of the curvature of the glass
and almost there. So when it's all done, you can see there's still kind of some lines and and uh, and uh, splotchiness in the image. When it's done, you'll see it kind of smooth itself out and everything just like that. So the the last thing you can do is kind of go in here with your light and you can kind of increase the brightness of your image or you can decrease it to a darker. Uh, probably ought to brighten it up just a bit more like that. Just increase the contrast just a little bit. So now you're really seeing some of the uh, uh, some of the neat stuff we can do. Uh, when we're all done, we'll hit the save tool. I'll put this into this temp directory. It just says fun with microstation. And it's done. That actually stays in there. If I minimize this and go into a program like Photoshop, um, at this point you can bring it in and, uh, and dress it up a little bit. But I think you'll find once we bring it into Photoshop, even at a fairly low resolution image, we'll go to File, Open. Oops, come on. Still thinking. Here we go. File open and uh, go to my computer. Oh, I'm going to be slow. Come on. I gave you a break. And temp directory. There's our image. And there it is. So as we, we can now bring it in, I brought this up in here so we could kind of zoom in on it. Um, You can see it's. Uh, need to move my candy canes around a little bit. I'm getting some uh, overlap here, but you can see the pretty decent looking resolution you get just with that particular item. So there you have it. That is Mike Fun with MicroStation, uh, little tabletop cutting board, glass, and some candy canes. So I think it's something that uh, the students kind of enjoy playing around with this type of exercise. Good deal.